resident saw. You're seeing the pilot episode was shot with a different character playing Dr. Walls, so there was already this ensemble sort of established, and then he was gone, and I came in as a new guy, so it was like, uh, you know, I was you know, very impressed with his cast. So it was, um, it, there was that feeling of like, I'm a, the guy from the outside, which was perfect, because it's exactly who Dr. Walls was on the show. And it even worked, you know, with Jim, because at first he was, you know, we met, and we were a couple times, we didn't really know each other very well, but then as the show goes on, as we got on with shooting, we got to know each other better and better, we shared hotel rooms and free air conditioning. <laughs> and, um, and so it all sort of things, it's funny how things sync up in the show with what's actually happening in the production. And when you, you have a chance to take advantage of that, I say, take advantage of it. Yeah, I remember uh, there was one of the video plots. I'm just going from puberty. <laughs> There's one of the video blogs where uh, Jack is introduced to Walter, and I think he said something about I met Jim and worked with him, and he annoyed the dog. Uh, Already in the middle of scenes, there are moments where he just irritates the hell out of me, which is exactly right. Something along those lines, but you know, it it uh, it was interesting for me, like Jack was saying, to go back and reshoot pilot with a different actor and, you know, not let my choices be the same choices because it's a different person and I would have to react differently. My life tended to reflect what was going on in the script and so I was able to directly draw from my life to um, play this character and in terms of my relationship with Jack, you know, it just evolved over time and just the the writing became so easy to work with because, you know, the pilot episode, Josh didn't have an idea of who we were, but then he started developing relationships with us and uh, knew our relationships with each other. And so uh, it just became easier and easier to pull from the page and just act, act the script out. The question is one thing that you will never forget that you'll take away from the shoot. Yeah, I guess uh, when, when you're making a film or a stage uh, production, there's always one uh, actor or crew member who's an asshole. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what surprised me about that, and that's not one of the best series. What surprised me about that production, there was not one team on the set. Maybe it was me, but uh, <laughs> it's a dull relationship. Usually Americans, no offense. But, <laughs> but, um, usually American writers would uh, paint a foreign, let's like say Russian character, like black or white, you know, it's either evil, it's kind, it's nice. And that was actually the first time where I was in production where it's not that straightforward. So that was, that was very nice. Oh, um, the one thing, that's kind of a hard thing. I Possibly, it's lightning beats fast. Yeah. <laughs> Someone wrote some fan fiction for Pioneer One, and yeah. I will never, ever forget that. As long as I live. The gym at the Penguins in the Burner. There was a, a scene where I was writing on a whiteboard, and it was a really it was a long technical speech that I had to give. It was really difficult to do. And uh, the whiteboard just went crashing down to the ground, and I still don't even see that. One other thing I'll take away is, is being roommates with Alexander Black twice. <laughs> being a car traveling up to Binghamton and being told that in the back seat there were several semi automatic weapons that we were transplanting in the truck. The scenes that we shoot uh, between uh, AR and myself uh, are kind of a psychology sort of. Uh, uh, office and uh, so the thing I remember most is in our reading from one of the books that we took off the shelf that had something to do with some very dark sexual <laughs> scatological. scatological content and uh, he went on reading it for quite a bit of time. <laughs> I guess this isn't something I remember specifically, but just that uh, I, I found the whole thing really inspiring. It made me realize there's just no excuses. Like, if they can make this many episodes on such a little budget, it makes me feel like I can do anything. On um, every episode, the same thing surprised the shit out of me that they asked me to come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one. It was getting a call 
Oh, uh, who is it that called? Was it you? No, it's Dan. It's Dan. 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 Dan called me. All right, so we're getting a call. We're driving back from being in the middle of a torrential downpour and uh, finding out that they just got hit by a, a, no. a deer. No, the deer didn't hit them. <laughs> It was, it was Mickey, Dan, and Jim here. They got hit by a car, and me thinking, oh my god, we've just, we've just ended the show. That's it. We've got to take care of our people who might be really hurt. The most amazing thing about that experience was uh, they, Bracey, Josh, and Rachel, uh, were following in a car behind us, and they pulled up. Bracey gets out, and he's like, is everyone okay? Okay, good. There's automatic weapons in your car. The cops are coming. Let's get them the fuck out of there. <laughs> 